Hello, good morning. This is Sir Dave and today we're gonna talk about the other types of demand elasticity. So in addition to the price elasticity of demand and and price elasticity of supply that we've already discussed, economists also use other elasticities to describe the behavior of buyers in the market. And that is what we're gonna talk about right now. We have the cross elasticity of demand and the income elasticity of demand. So let's start with the cross price elasticity of demand or the cross elasticity of demand. So this is the computation for that, no? The cross price elasticity of demand measures actually how much the quantity demanded of one good no, yung pinag isang produkto changes as the price of another good changes. So we are gonna talk about two goods here. So we're gonna calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded of good one divided by the percentage change in the price of good two. So yung pagbabago daw ng presyo ng isang good has something to do with the quantity demanded of other good. Now that is what we're gonna measure. How sensitive is the quantity demanded for good two if the price of good one changes. Okay? Para mas madali nating maintindihan, let's talk about hot dogs and hamburgers. So ngayon, unlike the price elasticity of demand and supply, kung ang coefficient ay interpret natin if it's less than 1, greater than 1, equal to 1, 0, or infinity, in cross price elasticity, what we're gonna examine is kung yung coefficient ba ay positive or negative. And that actually depends kapag ang pinag-uusapan natin ay substitute or complementary products. So remember, nung pinag natin yung law of demand, di ba? the price of related goods, na natin doon kung substitute ba o complement ba ang produkto before we analyze the effect to the demand curve. So, ganun din dito. So, as we discussed nga doon sa love demand, substitutes are goods that are typically used in place of one another. It gets you just like what we have right now. Sabi ko nga, wait, let's have hot dog and hamburgers. Kung walang hot dog, we have hamburgers. ba? Masarap naman yun, ba? Kung walang hamburgers, we have hot dogs. So, an increase in hot dog, let's say, tumaas yung presyo ng hot dog, induces people to grill hamburgers instead. Not bad, right? <laughs> so, ngayon, sabi ko, pag tumaas yung presyo ng hot dog, people will, sle- will, let- will, let- will less likely to buy hot dog. And then, they'll mo- they will move away from hot dogs to buy or to grill hamburgers. Ngayon, if that is the case, tumaas yung presyo ng hotdog, tapos bumaba yung quantity demanded, syempre, ng hotdog, syempre, di ba? What will happen to, what, anong nangyari ngayon sa quantity demanded for hamburgers? Tumaas. Kapag ganun yung nangyari, because the price of hotdogs and the quantity of hamburgers demanded move in the same direction, the cross price elasticity is positive. So ngayon, pag kinumpute nyo, may pinambangga kayong dalawang produkto at ang coefficient ay positive, yung dalawang produkto na pinagko-compare nyo or pinagbabangga nyo yung sensitivity of each other to the price changes, yun ay both substitute with to each other. Ngayon, yung level or yung close... N- yung nakadepende yung kung gaano man ka close substitute to or ka near substitute ng isang produkto depende sa taas nung coefficient na lalabas conversely no complements naman on the other hand are goods that are sabi natin that are typically used together such as computers let's take computers and um 
software that we're using in computers. Software is our product. The complementary product is, or the complement is the software. In this case, kung ganito, ito yung examine natin, the cross price elasticity would be negative. Okay? Indicating that an increase in the price of computer or a decrease, so let's say increase na lang, tumaas presyo ng computer, it will more likely to reduce the quantity of software demanded. So, ang lalabas doon ay negative. Kapag negative ang coefficient na lalabas dito as you examine two products, most likely, the products that you are comparing or relating to each other using elasticity are complements or complementary with each other. Remember, kapag positive ang lumabas, the products are substitutes. Kapag negative, complements. And this is wrong. It should be or. Ba? Kasi sabi natin kanina, cross price elasticity of demand is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded of good 1 over percentage change in price of good 2. Remember that this is the standard approach in the computation for um, the percentage change. If you want, there's actually another... Um, Another formula to be used in the computation of the percentage change na ginagamit ng mga economist. And that is the midpoint uh, midpoint approach. Now, you can search about that. You can use this as the standard approach. And there's also a midpoint approach. Okay? So now, that, now that we're done with the cross elasticity or cross price elasticity of demand, Let's proceed with the other type of demand elasticity is the income elasticity of demand. So ngayon madali lang din to, no? Ano ba si income elasticity of demand? What do what are we going to do here or what are we measuring here? We're we're actually measuring how the quantity demanded changes as consumer incomes changes. If you can still remember Pinag-usapan din natin sa law of demand, the income. And sabi ko last time, you have to take note if what we're talking about is a normal good or an inferior good. Ba? So how do we calculate the income elasticity of demand muna before we proceed to that concept? So as you can see, it is calculated as the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in income. So kung ano yung lalabas doon, it can either be kagaya ng cross price elasticity of demand, can either be positive or negative. So kung positive siya, ano ibig sabihin noon? Kapag negative siya, anong ibig sabihin noon? So most goods, kalimitan ng goods in the market are normal goods. Okay? Normal goods. Iilan lang yung mga tinatawag na inferior good. Kailan ba natin malalaman na isa, kapag ang isang produkto ay normal good? Kapag tumaas ang income natin, di ba? Mas, ta, mas mataas, mataas yung quantity demanded for normal good. Okay? Kapag mababa yung income natin, mataas yung quantity demanded natin for inferior goods and vice versa. Pag mataas ang income natin, mababa ang quantity demanded kay inferior good. Okay? Pag mababa income natin, mababa ang quantity demanded for normal goods. Okay? So ngayon, sabi nga natin kanina, most goods are normal goods. Higher income raises quantity demanded. You automatically, ganun nyo. Mas madaming pera natin. Hindi, syempre, let, mas mataas yung purchasing power natin. And mas madami yung pwede nating bilhin. Because quantity demanded and income move in the same direction, 
Yung mga normal good have positive income elasticity. Kasi hindi ba sabi na normal same direction pero silang pataas, positive 'yon. That will ano imply positive. Pag positive ang lumabas dito sa ginawa nating computation, yung dalawang go, yung good na pinag-uusapan natin na binabangga natin yung sensitivity sa 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 income natin, pag positive normal good 'yon. Okay? Those few goods that we've identified sinabi natin kanina, such as, for example, um, um, di ba, typically, yung binibili natin ay cow's milk. The inferior good is goat's milk. So, ngayon, higher income lowers the quantity demanded. Dito sa kapag inferior good ang pinag-uusapan natin. Since they are not moving in the same direction, but rather they move in opposite direction of base income, pataas si quantity demanded, that imp- that shows uh, move in moving of these two variables in opposite directions, negative ngayon yung lalabas dito automatically. Pero if in case na dalawa yung good na pinag-uusapan natin, hindi natin alam if inferior good or normal good, kapag negative ang lumabas, then ang pinag-uusapan natin ay inferior good inferior goods have negative income elasticities kaya gaya na sabi ko kanina kapag positive naman the normal good always have positive elasticities okay so madali lang you don't have to memorize the formula madali lang din naman siya as long as you've been able to familiarize yourselves kung paano ko computein yung percentage change ang palaging nasa ibabaw ay yung quantity demanded or quantity supplied. Okay, kung mapapansin nyo, palagi nasa ilalim si income. So, kanina yung cross price elasticity, palagi nasa ilalim yung changes in price. Ganun din yung pag, nung, kung babalikan nyo yung price elasticity of demand and supply, nasa ibabaw palagi yung changes or percentage change in quantity demanded. And that is the tip that I can give you To sum up everything about we've discussed about elasticity. Remember, the concept of elasticity is being used to measure the behavior or the sensitivity or the response of a one variable to other variable. And most of the time, this is being used in economics. Ay, but kung pati nawana, it should be clap yo. So I hope you've learned something today with regards to the other types of demand elasticities.